All right, today we're going to talk about chapter eight. Chapter eight is hypothesis testing. The first thing we need to know is the purpose of hypothesis testing and that it has four steps. So the purpose of hypothesis testing is truly just to actually compare and understand a population based on the statistics you're going to get from a sample. So there's going to be four steps. I'm going to give you the basic four steps and then we're going to actually go through each one of the different components of what makes up this actual distribution or curve or what we all know as the normal bell curve so that we can actually go through the four steps hypothesis testing and actually conduct a test. In this case, we're going to conduct a one sample Z test. So the first step of hypothesis testing is state the hypothesis. All right, so state the hypo. In the hypothesis, there's actually going to be two. There's going to be the first one, which is called the HO or the null hypothesis. And there's going to be the second one, the H1, or also seen as the HA, which is the alternative hypothesis. Then after you state your hypothesis, essentially your educated guess, you're going to go on to step two. You're going to set your criteria. And like I've explained in class over and over, you have to understand that the criteria is basically looking at all the different characters or pieces that your sample data has to have in order for you to conduct the test. So you must set a criteria. When we're looking at our criteria, some of the things we're going to look at hypothesis testing is understanding something like the alpha level, the Greek symbol for alpha. You're going to understand what's called your critical region. And of course, you would go on if you're conducting a true long hypothesis test, the sample size, sampling type, and different types of data, and experimental design. But we're not going to get into all those right now, just these two very important pieces. And once we go on beyond the one sample Z test, we'll also talk about something which is the DF or the degrees of freedom, which we'll explain further. The third step of hypothesis testing, after you state your hypothesis, you set your criteria, you must compute and analyze. In other words, you're going to run the test and then look at the results of the test. And the results actually get compared back to the critical region or the critical area that you set in your set criteria and also gets compared back to your hypotheses. So if you're starting to hopefully see, you can have step one without two, two without three, and then three without four. All of these actually build up to each other. So if you actually do them out of order, you'll tend to get confused and you'll tend to get stuck. So the most important thing is to understand this is like a scientific method. When we do scientific method back when we were younger, when we were kids, we understand that we had to do it in order. Step one, step two, step three. If you jumped around, it wasn't ethical, nor was it valid. And then of course the whole point, it can't be generalized nor duplicated or used again. So the final step after you state your educated guess, your hypotheses, you set a criteria and you actually run your test and look at the results, the analysis of your test, you make the last thing, which common sense would be, Make a decision. You make a decision in APA format. And making a decision has to do with basically saying if your sample is an extreme statistic or if it is representative of the population that you are actually testing. 